Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And today we're going to be talking about the difference between pain and suffering. And this is a very interesting subject. Uh, Hilde, you brought it up to me last week. Um, so this is going to... Um, I. This is a very good one because a lot of, I mean, pretty much most humanity is dealing with this and a vast number of people on this planet are suffering. So we're going to get into this thing and I'm going to dissect it for you. So I'm just going a little bit slow. There's still people joining in. So I just have to let them, let them in. Um, while that is happening, let me make a couple of announcements. Normally I do these announcements at the end. I will do it at the end, but I'm doing it right now to buy myself some time for people to come in. So I don't have to interrupt the meditation or the talk to let people in. So we're going to have a couple of events. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have our shamanic healing circle. And that's going to be from 10 to 12 Los Angeles time. Uh, I believe, I don't know if Scandinavia has changed its time or not. I haven't checked. So I think it's going to be your 6 or 7 p.m. in the evening um, in Scandinavia. Are we about eight hours, eight hour difference or nine hour difference? What time? It, what time is it right now in Norway? Hilda, what time is it there? It's uh, 19. So it's 7 o'clock. Yes. So here in Norway, we're a nine hour difference. Yeah. So, so we start at 6 tomorrow. Now 7, sorry. Right. Yeah. So that's uh, the shamanic healing circle. I will be doing some shamanic ritual and, I'll, and uh, we'll do the healing work, which those of you who've been with me before, uh, you know how it works. Uh, once we get into the unified field and we tap into it, then time space doesn't exist any longer. And um, we all get into this field and we all feel it. Uh, on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I'm having the 5D Quantum Awareness Workshop, the direct experience. And uh, this workshop is going to be how we have and we do access our fifth dimensional self. Our fifth dimensional, uh, we're already connected to our fifth dimensional self. That is our higher self and it's an aspect of ourselves and all our intuitive knowing and uh, artistic, creative aspects of ourselves coming from our higher self, which is our fifth dimensional self. So how do we tap into it and how do we have a direct experience and can live our lives in this life from a higher level of awareness? And we're going to get into that and I will share that with you and we'll do some exercises and I'll give you the tools that how you can maintain your um, level of awareness in a higher frequency and not fall into the 3D world as far as fear, worry and anxiety goes because that's the job of the media and that's what's happening here in the third dimension is to uh, create a lot of fear, worry and anxiety and keep us in this state of separation and uh, distrust. And so we're gonna get into that. In the meantime, we're gonna start our meditation. So. As I've said this before many times, we talked about it. The most simple meditation is some is a form of a meditation that doesn't require effort. The, the less effort, the better of a meditation because meditation is not an action. Meditation is not something we do. 
Meditation is something that happens naturally. And meditation is a natural state of every human being. And we, a lot of times in our lives, are in meditation. A lot of times we're doing things meditatively. Whether we have any kind of formal practice or not, this is our nature. Meditation is a part of our lives. So, but we, a lot of us, because of our upbringing and conditioning, we're not aware of that. Those of us who are here, we've done various kinds of meditations. Normally, we're doing meditation because we want to be quiet. We want to be find inner peace. That's one of the main reasons we're doing it, to get balance, to get to find equilibrium, to not be affected by these ups and downs of our emotions. So you don't get pulled from the world above and the world below. So you can remain level and you can make your decisions and have your movements in life from a place of clarity, not chaos. And if in this world, m more people were meditating and more people knew how to operate from their center, then we would have had a different world. And it would have been a lot more peaceful. But anyway, what we're doing, what we're gonna be doing is, uh, we're gonna work on ourselves. We're not gonna be worried about the world and and concern our, ourselves with elements we cannot control. We'll just stick to what really works for us. The number one thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to be quiet. So, what is inner peace? How do we reach inner peace? Inner peace is when there is no stories in your mind. If you have no thoughts and it's quiet in your mind, you have reached inner peace. You're operating from a place of being quiet. If there is chaos in your mind, then suffering comes with it. And it creates all sorts of imbalance in your life. So why don't we just do something very simple? instead of really trying to get rid of your thoughts to be quiet or to concentrate on your breath or to do a mantra in your head and keep repeating a word, why don't we go back into the source of where the thoughts come from? Where do they come from? Where is this agitation that is happening in your mind originated? what happens let's get let's go to the source of it okay so rather than battling like let's say what i'm talking about is let me use an example uh like the the new medicine the modern medicine that is being practiced is only dealing with the symptoms so if you have a thyroid issue and you go to the doctor and to a normal uh, uh, MD, not a functional medicine, not an alternative uh, physician, but you go to a normal MD, what they're gonna do is they're gonna give you medication to uh, deal with the symptom. And the symptom is that you have some abnormality in your thyroid but they're not looking for the source of it. Where is this issue coming from? How did your thyroid get to this point that is malfunctioning and looking for the source of it? So I don't wanna give you a meditation that is simply going to quiet you down for half an hour, 45 minutes. And then after that, your mind is gonna come back. But why? where is the source of this problem? How is this problem starting? So if we turn our attention inwards, 
and follow the stream of your thoughts. So you have a thought, whatever it is, and you're following it back inwards. And you keep going in and in and in and in and you're going inwards. So let's do that. Let's turn inside, turn, or, turn inwards and look for the stream of your thoughts. Where do they come from? And just go deep inside and take a look. Follow your thoughts back to their source. And in following your thoughts to the source, take a deep breath. Slowly, slowly go deeper. Keep following the stream of the thoughts and see where do they come from. Very gently, without forcing anything. Just be gentle, easy, simple. Look within yourself. Look for the source of your thoughts. And you're walking inwards. You're walking on this path within yourself. And then it may be dark it may be weird, it may be confusing, or not, it may be clear. Just keep going back. Keep walking inside on this pathway. Imagine this road. It's an inner road. You're by yourself. You feel safe. You're not scared. You're like a child being curious. And you're walking inwards. You're gently walking in to see what's going on. Don't fight anything and don't force anything. Simply keep walking in. You're just watching. You're just aware. You're simply looking. And in this expedition, you're tracing your thoughts. And if you do it right, you come to the very end of it and see if there is anything there. Don't try to imagine anything. Don't try to make anything up. If an image comes to you, it's okay. I want you to just be very easy about it and not fight anything. And you arrive at a place which is very silent, very quiet. There's no story, it simply is. And 
entering into yourself to the heart of awareness. Meeting and coming across the sense of I am, the sense of being. You're perfectly aware you are here. Your awareness is not touched. You followed all of your thoughts to the source. Where do they come from? What is there before you think? Who are you if you don't think? If you have no thoughts, then what is your name? What is your identity? If you have no thoughts, then what is your past? If we take all of your memory away and your ability to think, what is left? Would you still be here? And who would you be?
slowly come back. It's one of those days it's hard to speak. <laughs> You know, sometimes when the energy is so strong and you dive into this silence, it makes it very difficult to talk. So, The great way is <clears throat> easy to go through it if you don't have any kind of preferences. So if you don't really have an attachment to the results. So things don't necessarily go your way. So what happens is that a lot of times we're mistaking pain with suffering, which they are two different things. Pain and pleasure is an aspect of this dimension. And there's, you, cannot, you can't have one without the other. So <clears throat> if you're going to experience pleasure, naturally at one point you're going to experience pain too. So you can't just live this life without, with one only. It doesn't work unless you're drugged out your entire life and you're numb. Then you don't feel any of them. So <clears throat> And people say, okay, what if I, what about desires? Well, desires are part of God, all desires. So it's natural to have desires. And desires, they lead to pain or pleasure. When your desire is fulfilled, you're, you're pleased, you're happy. And then when your desire is not fulfilled, simply it could be painful. You don't get what you wanted. Now, it's different than suffering. Suffering is a secondary um, element or a reaction that it comes because of an identification because of an attachment to the results. You're heavily invested into the results, or whatever that is. Whatever is the scenario. 
whether it's a relationship, so you're really interested in a person and and you start investing into your relationship with this person. And in this, as a result of all these investments, you're going to be attached to the results because you want results to go in your way. You want a certain kind of an outcome. You want things to go your way. And, and since you get more invested into it, not realizing it unconsciously, that you're heavily invested. So when the person at the end of the day tells you he or she is not interested in being with you or doesn't want to marry you or doesn't want to get into this partnership or whatever the story is, and you're, you're really set that the results that you want him or her to say yes, and they say no. So then it, things don't go your way. So initially you're going to feel pain, but then if you're invested, heavily invested in the results that they have to be your way, then suffering comes and you start to suffer. And this is with anything. This is like, let's say you are invested in real estates, you're invested in stock market, in whatever area, and this is happening on a daily basis. Of course, you're not going to buy some land or some property, some income property, a home, investing in real estate with the intention that you're going to be losing. And that's not where, that's not how you enter into it. When you do invest in real estate, you're doing it with the intention that you're going to gain, you're going to win, but you never know what's going to happen. So when you lose, if you are not really invested into the results, then it means there's not a heavy preference here. So you can easily let it go. You can easily surrender to what is. And as a result of that, you will not suffer. You need to just see, look at it and kind of take a moment and just look at every moment of your life. Okay. Even for example, um, whatever, if you're with your teacher, you're with your spiritual teacher, you are and you're heavily investing in some kind of results. You want them to be in a certain way or you really want to get something and it doesn't go your way. And you didn't really get what you wanted from your spiritual teacher or they didn't behave in a way you are invested in it. You're expecting them to behave. And so what happens is disappointment takes place and if you're really still heavily invested, it can turn into suffering, which is different than pain. Pain is a different story. Whether we're talking about physical pain or emotional pain, that's a natural element that comes with pleasure, that there's no way out of it. When you desire something or when you want something, Pain and pleasure come with it naturally, but pain is, you have to look at it, that pain is completely different than suffering. And suffering is something that most people on this planet are going through. And that is basically because originally from the childhood, again, we're programmed and we're not really trained. We don't have the spiritual teaching and training. Certainly my parents didn't have it. And certainly I saw with my own family this 
depending on the region where they come from, uh, their also their conditioning, cultural conditioning. Like I, you know, grew up part of my life in Middle East. And it's a Middle Eastern type of mentality. It's very emotional. It's a lot of emotions in the even giving love or rejecting someone. There's tons of emotions involved in it. And in my later years of spending time in Scandinavia, I saw something kind of opposite of it. And with Growing up and being around Scandinavians, I saw that they're not so emotional the way the Middle Easterns are. So people call Scandinavians that they're cold, but whether they're cold or they're warm or whatever it is, it's a culture. The culture is different. It's not so dramatic in emotions. So, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm not doing that. But what I'm talking about is that basically myself, I can only talk about myself and my own direct experience. That's all I can speak of because this is the only thing I know. Anything outside of my direct experience is something that I've heard. It's knowledge. It's not knowing. It's not knowledge and knowing are completely different. Two different things. Most of the information in this life that we have is knowledge. And very small portion of it is knowing. They're completely two different things. But back into pain, pleasure, and suffering is that a lot of it has to do, majority of it with, is our, with our training how we've been trained, how we've been brought up, what sort of training we have gone through and we've been prepared for life, which most of us have not. And later on in years, through a lot of dissatisfaction, a lot of failures, we have to fail so many times or go through some kind of shock treatments, losing somebody or losing a body part or losing money or love or whatever it is. And it forces us to turn inwards, to look within and to look for answers in life because you can't find it outside. So, and now with this situation of the COVID-19 and what is going on in the world, it has created a perfect environment for a lot of people around the world to seek, to look for answers because they can't find the answers outside in the world because the world that we know or we believe that it's our reality is kind of falling apart or it's betraying you in a way, you feel betrayed. You feel like, what's going on? And this desire, this feeling like, we want to hang on to what it used to be. You know, I want it to go back to normal. I, I want everything to be the way it used to be. Well, we have to understand and we have to come to this agreement within ourselves that number one, that world that you used to know, it's gone. This is the reality right now. This is the only thing that exists. Whatever this is, with the social distancing or whatever qualities it has, it's good, it's bad. But the mind wants to go back and compare it to what it used to be. And a year ago, the mind would go and compare what it was into a utopian world. That, and that's the subject of the uh, neo-spirituality uh, of a utopian life. 
that it's all going to be lovey-dovey and light and beauty and angels and blah, blah, blah. And there's not going to be any pain and suffering in it. But that's impossible. As long as you're in a third dimensional body, in a physical form in this dimension, you cannot escape pain and pleasure. It's impossible. It's part of the package of being born with it. It's like you were born with two hands, two eyes, nose, ears, your ability to sense things. You can't be born in this life and have a human body and not be able to sense. It's impossible. That's a part of the package. So even this idea that I want all of us where I would, I'm imagining most of us want the world to go back to what it used to be. So now, okay, so what is the attitude? If your attitude is the acceptance of what is, okay, this is the reality. This is what is going on right now. Whether it's man-made or it happened, whether it's a conspiracy, that it created this situation, or this was like existence created some kind of virus and it turned us to be in this point. Whatever is your story, whatever is the story, it doesn't matter. I'm not interested in the story. It's not my focal point, because I hear all kinds of stories. You know, some I agree, some I disagree, some sound good, some they don't, but the story is not my point. What, what is my point at this point is right now in this moment, how do I deal with life right now? Okay, not being in an imaginary situation of, oh, it's going to be like this and we're going to be transcending and elevating our consciousness in this other kind of uh, reality, uh, higher level of consciousness, and da, da 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 I'm talking about right now. Real, our lives right now, the way it is, and dealing with the knots and bolts of this dimension of today, this moment, because this is the only thing that there is. This moment right now, this eternal moment that keeps recreating itself. And it's always here and it's always now. Now, if I go to this place that I hate this reality, I can't stand this, and this whole thing about wearing a mask and going to public and not being able to go to uh, a restaurant comfortably or not be able to go to a, a festival or I can't go dancing or I can't go to a party and I can't get together with my family because everybody's so freaked out and my friends are divided in two sections and some are cool and some of them are really uh, worried and blah 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 and that's my idea and I don't want it to be this way and I want it to be a different day way then I suffer. It's very simple. Then suffering starts happens because I am very heavily invested in the idea that things should be different than what they are. That God, life, existence doesn't know what it's doing and I know better and things should be in a different way. But the reality is things are not in a different way. This is what it is right now. And if I can exercise and practice my high level of consciousness in this moment now, then this idea of living in a higher level of consciousness is always going to be postponed. It's always going to be deferred to another time. 
have to demonstrate it now to myself and live it now, regardless of the external conditions. And look at the external conditions as an opportunity that's been presented to me to help me grow and reach and elevate to this higher level of consciousness, which is also here. Now, that's a different attitude of looking at what is going on today in the external world and turning the poison into medicine, turning this situation that to me it's kind of unfortunate or dissatisfying or not the way I want it. Okay, so that's my attitude. I don't, don't really like this. And I'm going to use this towards my own advantage to help me elevate instead of complaining about it or fighting it. It's completely different. All of a sudden you turn everything around. And in order to be successful in that and to do it is simply you divert your attention inwards and just look when you get up in the morning and you're functioning during the day just pay attention where are the complaints like you get up and all of a sudden something is happening and something is going on which is not in your favor and you don't really um uh, don't like it something in your life is happening and you don't really like it okay and your mind starts going crazy your mind starts coming up with all kinds of different stories and just simply be aware of that take a look at it that your mind is creating a story. Your mind is coming up and telling you that what is, whatever is the situation, should not be like this and it should be different. See where that happens. Because it's definitely not written on the sky. You definitely don't get an email no one's coming to your home and knock on your door and give you a certificate or a kind of a mail. It's certainly happening in your mind, in your thoughts. That what is, is not perfect and it should be different. Because you know better. You know better than God. You know better than the creator of the universe. You know better than the creation. And creation doesn't know what it's doing. Because it's not according to the way you would like it to be. And the way you would like it to be is based on the ideas that it's been implemented in your mind. And that depends on which culture and which training you're coming from. If you're coming from a very religious um, culture, then you would like to view world very religious in the way that you've been brought up. If you're coming from a pseudo spirituality and new age spirituality, then you would you're viewing the world that it should be according to your belief system based on your conditioning. If you're coming from a family is very military and militant and very disciplinary, then you're going to start viewing the world and life from that, that place. And that's your perfect idea. You know, if you're coming from a, let's say, you know, in the past it was communism or, you know, you grew up in a very strict 
co you know, a communist kind of a mentality, or you grew up in a very capitalistic mentality, that everything is about gain and making money and, and, and expanding your finances, and this is how you really grew up, and that's all you know. So that's your reality. And anything which is not going in that way and is not according to to your wishes, then it's wrong. Am I making any sense? Are you with me? It is the conditioned mind that dictates and brings all these things up for you, that things should be according to the way you believe it should be. And when it doesn't go that way, what happens? It creates suffering. It's not your desires that create your suffering. We all have desires. Desire is very natural. It's a part of being a human being that you have desires. And of course, all desires will lead you to pain or pleasure. Suffering is a complete different story. But now, let's say you're practicing this for one week. I'm going to give you a homework to do. So why don't we practice this for one week? That, implement this in your everyday, just do it for one week. You don't have to convert, you don't have to agree with me, you don't have to follow this or anything. I'm just giving you a tool and try it. And if it doesn't work for you, you don't have to do it anymore. But see if it works for you. If you implement this point of view, that whatever you are dealing with during the day, be open to that thing, whatever you're trying to accomplish or you want, be open to it, doesn't go your way. It doesn't, it doesn't go in that direction. And be okay with it if it doesn't go your way. Because what else can you do? Even let's say you have invested in real estate, you have invested in a relationship and then either the real estate investments go sour or you lose money in stock market or the relationship you're invested in and that person tells you no, what else can you do? What can you do? Can you force them? Can you put a, just a gun in their, someone's head and, and threaten them to go out with you or to be with you? You can't, it doesn't work that way. So if you have invested in real estate or stock market or whatever it is, and things don't go your way and you end up losing or not making money or something like that. So if you have this attitude of acceptance of what is and not really just looking at it from this other perspective, of a higher level of perspective, that you did everything you could to manage this endeavor and this project, and you did everything you could do for, to get to, for success, but it didn't go that way. And you look at it like, okay, existence, God, love, spirit, the creator, of, uh, the creator of this creation knows better. And so things went in a different direction and you surrender to that and you're okay with it. Then how can you suffer? Now you can, or you can just, what do most of us do? Most of the time, just one moment, excuse me, I have to get my, um, 
I have to get my Instagram going. I apologize. Just one, one momento. And I get this running again. Okay, just one second. Sorry about that. So what about how much time do you spend during the day? Have you ever paid attention that I should have said this, I should have done that, I really screwed up. If I was a nicer son or a nicer father or a nicer mother or lover, if I did this, I did that things wouldn't go wrong, things would have gone differently. How much time do you spend doing that? Or look at me, I made the right decision and I did the right thing and blah, 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 and patting yourself on the shoulder that how great you are and what great decisions you've made. You know, most of the time, is that all these thoughts come for you that, okay, I got it. I should be calling this person or I should be doing this thing, whatever that thing is. These thoughts keep coming for you. I should do it. I should do it. I should do it. And the feelings, thoughts are very strong and you go ahead and you do it. Okay. And then later, the same mind, the same thoughts, the same entity who was telling you do it, do it, do it, is beating you up for doing it. I'm going to use a very simple example. Let's say you have a sensitive stomach, okay? Very simple example. And if you eat ice cream, you get really bloated and your stomach really hurts because you're lactose intolerance or whatever is the, whatever it is. So you get these desires, these feelings like you really want an ice cream, you want it, and you're really desiring, you know, some ice cream. So you get these urges and then you go ahead and you buy a pint of ice cream and you eat it all. And now your stomach is really bloated and you feel really sick and you hate it and you're really going through a lot of pain and that's gonna take about an hour and during this time, you start beating yourself up and all these thoughts come about that you're such an idiot. How many times your mind is telling you, have I told you don't eat ice cream? Ice cream is going to make you bloated. It's going to make you sick and blah, blah. Now you're beating yourself up. How many times have you done it or how many times you're doing it even now during the day that you do something and there's all these thoughts, feelings that you should be doing something. And then after you do it, you start beating yourself up. And that is with whatever, food, relationship, investments, whatever that is. Anyone? And pay attention of how much Pay attention how much of your daytime you're going to spend into this process. Take a look. Look at your mind because it's there and it's free and it's available for you. You can't escape it. Pay attention to it. Look how much of your time during the day you are in this place of battling yourself or this other part of you about things you should have done that you didn't do or if you didn't you did them differently or things you should be doing in the future which is definitely a projecting projection of the past.
The other day I went and bought myself a pint of ice cream. I know very well my body can't digest it. I mean, I can, I can have a little bit, but not a pint. So I'm going there and buying the pint of ice cream and I'm telling myself that, okay, Zaratustra, you're getting this pint of ice cream. I'm going to eat all of it. And in one hour, I'm going to be sick. And I'm going to have belly. My belly is going to be bloated. And I'm going to be very uncomfortable. But I will not complain. So I go get the ice cream and I eat all of it. And obviously, for the next hour, an hour and a half, I have my belly is bloated. And I'm just very careful and watching the mind because the thought wants to come, you idiot, you went and bought this ice cream and you ate the whole thing and you, I'm watching it. The moment the thoughts start to rise and I'm like, uh-uh, hey, uh-uh. The belly is bloated and you know, you're kind of uncomfortable, but it was like, ah. Uh. It's enough to go to the pain of the body and I'm not going to let you beat me up. Because now I'm going to be suffering and paying five times or 10 times more for that 10 minutes that I was really enjoying the pleasure of senses. It was like, no, I'm not, I am not allowing you to come and do whatever you, I was fully aware. I walked into this in full awareness. I knew there's going to be consequences. And that's it. Done deal. There was no story after that. If you pay attention, you're really honest with yourself because in this work, you're going to have to be really honest with yourself because it's self-awareness, self-realization. Because most of the time, 99% of the time, especially if you live in this society, if you live in the US, is you're trained to put your finger at other people. It's always someone else's fault. It's always some other situation. You're a saint, nothing, you're, you don't do anything wrong. And in this spiritual path, you're just going to have to be really straightforward with yourself and quit pointing finger at anyone else. Just look at yourself, not, not saying you blame yourself. Don't take me wrong, but really mind your own business. Just be straightforward with yourself and bring your attention to yourself and pay attention. Look, look at the games that the mind starts to play and it creates a secondary reaction, which is suffering. It's different than pain. Yeah, you eat the ice cream, you had the pleasure, and now it turns to pain. That's a part of the deal. But then the mind starts to come and create suffering. One exercise or one practice you can implement in your daily life is just simply you're here and you're aware. You're aware of the thoughts, they come and they go. The thoughts come and go all the time they're traveling through. So who is it that is aware of the thoughts come and go? So we're asking, we say we want inner peace and we're asking for inner peace. 
Because if you're really at peace with yourself, what difference does it make what the other world is doing? If you're really peaceful inside, you're really at peace with yourself. And when I say you're at peace with yourself, I'm not saying that you are doing everything you're imagining that you should be doing or you are living this ideal life that you're expecting yourself to live. I'm not talking about that because that's conditional. When I talk about inner peace is that you're simply fully aware and here that when thoughts come the mind arises and it creates a havoc you're simply aware of it you're not trying to control your thoughts you're not trying to change your thoughts to be positive you're not controlling your thoughts you're not trying to make your thoughts positive and you're not trying to visualize something positive. You're simply aware that the thoughts come like a storm and they, they come through and all of a sudden this blue sky gets cluttered with a lot of clouds and it starts raining and there's a storm. The storm is a busy mind. So how long do the storms last in the sky? Storm comes, it rains, it hell, it snows, there's thunder lights going, and then what goes, what happens? It goes away. And then when the storm goes away and you look up into the blue sky, what's left? The blue sky is blue. So then everything becomes quiet. Now you're at peace because the storm went away. When the mind is not busy, when there's no thoughts, what's left? Everything is quiet. And then another stream of thoughts starts coming in. So then you're aware of all these thoughts and they are going crazy and then they go away. There has to be, there must be something inside you which is not involved and is, is not concerned with your thoughts and with your feelings. Something is always here something in a state of silence something inside you is still it's like this and this part of you we call it the observer the watcher the witness this part of you is really still and is aware of the mind and all these thoughts coming is aware of them and when they go, is aware that it's quiet and is silent. So there is a measuring element inside you that measures things. If you bring your attention to, towards this part, the watcher, the seer, the observer, these are words for it, the watcher, the one who's watching, the seer, the one who's seeing, the one who's aware, something inside you, this part of you can't change, is not touched, it's always still. Something inside you is always still, something inside you does not change. And because you have this part, 
then this part is aware of changes. This part is aware of things passing through because they're passing through in front of this one. This one doesn't move, it's always here and is aware of movements. Thoughts passing through your mind, emotions passing through your being, but the observer remains the observer. The blue sky is always remains blue. It doesn't matter how many storms pass through it. So it's for you to decide which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the blue sky who is not affected by anything? Or you want to be the storms? So far to this point in your life, you always identify with the thoughts and the emotions because that's who you think you are. You think you're your thoughts. So you're trying to control your thoughts. It's impossible. So what happens? You suffer. You think you're your emotions. So you're trying to use all kinds of techniques and courses and medication and drugs and food and pleasure and pain or whatever to control your emotions. So you can't do it and you suffer. And I'm offering you the alternative way, the easy way, the best way. Simply bring your attention towards the observer. Reconnect with who you really are, the one who is aware not what he or she is aware of. Bring your attention to the one who is aware, not what he or she is aware of. What you do normally is you spend a lot of time being aware of your thoughts, being aware of your emotions, identifying with them. And they're like yo-yo. Shift your attention to this other part and you see you're instantly free. You discover freedom and inner peace. Then life changes because you're not trying to change the outside elements to adjust to you and to go your way. You have changed something inside yourself. Means you're okay with however, whichever way things go. That's much easier. Why doing it the other way? Because it doesn't work. You're the one who needs to change, not the world. Leave the world alone. Don't try to change the world. Leave that to the creator of this creation. Let the one who created the world deal with it. The one before you were born was handling everything and after you and I die, is going to handle everything. Leave that work to that guy, to that dude. All you have to do is make a change inside yourself. And then all of a sudden you find that life is a lot easier than what you thought. And you will not suffer. Right, we're coming to the end of our academy. I'm really grateful to be together. Thank you for joining me. Our next academy is going to be next week, next Wednesday. Um, 
As I mentioned earlier, for those newcomers, uh, those who came in later, I'm sorry, latecomers, uh, we're going to have uh, a, the shamanic healing circle tomorrow. It's a two hour event and you can still register at my website, zaratustra.tv. And we'll send you a, a link to the Zoom. Uh, the session will be recorded and we will send you a copy of that recording. And then on this coming weekend, we're going to have a workshop. It's called 5D Quantum Awareness, the Direct Experience. And we we'll call it the Direct Experience because unless you have a direct experience of the self, of your majestic part, unless you really touch the truth of who you are, then everything else is blah, blah, blah. It's absolutely BS. We have to touch the unified field of awareness within ourselves. We have to come to that. We have to get a taste of who we are. Otherwise, it's all words, it's all text, it's all theory, it's a concept, it's a projection into the future. I'm not interested in a future and I'm not interested in the past. I want God and I want it now and I want it here, right now in this moment. And if it's true, and if it's real, then I have to have access to it right now. And that which we're looking for is here. And that which we're really looking for is actually inside yourself. Nobody can give it to you. Nobody can take it away from you. But the right teachings and the right teacher can direct you to find it inside yourself because that's the only place to be found here within yourself and to get to that we have to go beyond the mind the world of thoughts the mind is separating us from the truth of who we are because of blah 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 because there's this cloud between you and the blue sky and you don't get to see and experience the blue sky because of the clouds. So we have to go around it to reach freedom. We have to go around the mind. It's a migration from the head to the heart. It's a journey from the head to the heart. We have to sink into the unified field of love, the oneness, not just words, coming to this place when there is no thoughts. Now it's just pure experience. Anything less than that is not acceptable because it's not real. It's a story. So this weekend, we're gonna get into that and I'm gonna help you with that to the best of my ability. Um, I also mentioned this before, I'm gonna mention it again. Uh, this year for the first time, I created a one-on-one -on -one training program. It's a three month training program. It's a VIP tailor-made program designed for your needs. So it's called Life Training Program. If any of you are interested in um, getting information about it, uh, contact me and we make a private consultation appointment and I'll get into the details of it and see what is your goal. And uh, if you're interested, then I will help you to reach your goals. So far we've been I would, I'm proud to say we had 100% of 
positive results and a lot of good things have come out of it and all of my participants been extremely satisfied and happy they all reached their goals so in the past i wasn't able to offer this one-on-one -on -one training program because it's three months um, because i travel i go to europe three times a year and tour so it's very difficult for me to keep track uh, but now that I'm stationed here in one place uh, and I can't really travel for work, so I have time to get into this and uh, that's why I designed this program and I'm very excited about it. So feel free to contact me. You can write to me at uh, info at Zaratustra .tv. Info at Zaratustra .tv. That's uh, my email and my website is zaratustra.tv. I think we're done with questions and answers. And again, nice having you. It's my pleasure. It's my honor to be at your service, sending you my love and light. And I look forward to seeing you. The recording, those of you who joined me on the Zoom, uh, this session is recorded and we're going to be emailing it to you uh, within the next few days. It also will go on my uh, YouTube page, which is Zaratustra 5D, as well as my podcast. The recording of it is going to go on the, uh, my podcast. It is Zaratustra 5D as well. And it will be on fa my Facebook pages and my website all over. So you can't miss it. You can watch it again. Okay. Thank you.